All right, hey everybody, my name is Dustin Minnick. Uh, I work for Red Hat IT, and this talk's going to be uh, discussing how we are currently moving systems, Linux systems, um, from using a legacy Kerberos and LDAP setup to using IDM. If you're not familiar with IDM, it's the downstream of Free IPA. If you're not familiar with Free IPA, uh, you can kind of lovingly think of that as AD for Linux, and it basically has certificate management built in, Kerberos built in, LDAP built in. It also manages sudoers, SE Linux, has a DNS server built in. So it does a lot of stuff all in one nice package. So uh, to get started, I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about Red Hat's IT environment or Red Hat's environment as a whole. I'll let you guys kind of read that slide because there's a lot of words, but the, the overall, I guess, takeaway that I want you to realize is that Red Hat is a big company and it kind of operates with several sec or I guess several groups running kind of like their own startups. And uh, that creates challenges for things that you want to change across the entire breadth of the company like this. For instance, I know what IT is doing and I know what systems we manage, and I know that you know, if we give laptops to new employees, I can be reasonably assured what they're gonna get on them, things of that nature. But engineering, the people that actually write the software, kind of have their own IT group. And that's good for the company because that allows their group to run like bleeding edge versions of things like OpenStack and whatever they're running. But at the same time, other people in the company need, I would say, more standardized or more red tape style things and more normal offerings that like a normal IT shop would offer. So um, it's kind of an interesting mixture of where we offer some things that other groups use and then other groups do basically the same things we do. So right now this is our legacy setup and this is what we're trying to move away from. So we have you know, a Kerberos master and DC1 that replicates the Kerberos slaves elsewhere. We have Dontag, which is RHCS, and that is the certificate system. And that's multi-master, it's in multiple data centers, it writes back and forth. Same for LDAP 389, RHDS, writes back and forth in multiple data centers. And for DNS, we run bind with one single master that writes to slaves in multiple data centers. Um, so, I mean, you can see that this is a lot of software, a lot of stuff to maintain. And you can also tell that Bind and Kerberos have at least a little bit of lag time. If something goes down, we'd have to do some work to promote some stuff to master. Uh, this goes into how things are configured right now. So. We do still have some RHEL 6 boxes hanging around, and they're running an SS PAM LDAPD, PAM KRB5, an SLCD, an SCD, took into LDAP and Kerberos. Our RHEL 7 boxes are running SSSD. Uh, they're puppet managed, and whenever we give laptops and machines to people, it's either RHEL 7, Windows, or Mac OS. And those are kind of like blessed images that our desktop desktop team manages. Uh, we also support a lot of bring your own devices um, and self-managed systems. So one thing that's I think also interesting about Red Hat is even for the systems that Red Hat pays for. So if you get a laptop from Red Hat, last time I heard the statistic, like 50% of those aren't even running the corporate image. Like people just get it and wipe it and install and do whatever they want which is actually great for the company because most of those people end up installing Fedora and then they find bugs in Fedora and Fedora gets better and then RHEL gets better. So that's great, except for now if I want all of those people that are self-managing their own machines to start using IPA, where do I, how, how do I do that? Um, so <laughs> yeah, um, perfect world config is moving everything to IPA. IPA does all the things, and IPA has replicas, and it's all multi-master everywhere. So again, this, this is easier to maintain because it's all one big stack. And 
a lot less servers, and also we get rid of the single master problem for Kerberos and the single master problem for uh, some of our DNS stuff that we got going on. Uh, ideally, everything would be RHEL 7 uh, using SSSD, and we hopefully be Ansible managed. And as we start to roll out new laptops, let's bake in IDM support to the actual images that you know, the salespeople, the finance people, the people that want something that's supported by standard IT processes um, so that they can use a known, a known system. And then let's also give well-documented instructions, RPMs, and other things for everybody else that wants to do their own stuff. So getting there is going to take a long time. Uh, so we're currently in about phase two and a half. Um, so we have the existing infrastructure, which was the legacy Kerberos, LDAP, uh, Bind, so on and so forth. And we've created an IDM cross-realm trust. And we've also done a DNS zone delegation. So um, our legacy Kerberos realms, redhat.com, we now have an ipa.redhat.com. They both trust each other through Kerberos bidirectional trust. And right now the IPA DNS is only managing uh, ipa.redhat.com and its subdomains. So that's phase one, and I'll pretty soon go into all of the challenges we've had getting past even that phase. Uh, phase two is kind of adoption tooling. So as I mentioned, um, with kind of this open model that we run at Red Hat where people do whatever they want to do, we have to make it easy for people to switch so that they will have incentive to switch and actually want to. And one of that, or one of the things that we're trying to encourage folks to do is people that have written Ansible, uh, played Ansible roles or puppet modules to manage things like sudoers and SE Linux um, and those kind of things that are now, the IDM is able to centrally store and manage and also SSH configs and stuff like that because IDM will do uh, HBAC controls. We have to get those folks to compare what they're currently doing to what IPA offers and try to show off that IPA can do this better and potentially you know, coax them into switching. Um, phase three is going to be cutting off RHCS. So that's gonna be the easiest thing for us to kill because basically people are just using it to cut certs, whether that's server certs or client certs. And all we have to do is convince folks to start doing those same actions through the IPA CAs. Um, one of the things in phase three also is the RHDS, so that's the LDAP repurpose. Uh, one of the things that IPA states in their documentation is that it's really good at storing user and group information and it's really tuned to do that very well. And Red Hat over time has collected a lot of cruft in our LDAP servers. So people will come to us and say, hey, I'd like to store my biography in LDAP or hey, I want my picture in LDAP or things that aren't like your typical Linux and Unix attributes they wanted an LDAP. So we've written schemas and we've extended our old legacy LDAP to support that. And we have to push back on that and decide how, how dirty we're gonna make IDM to support what people want and how, how unhappy we can make people to make our lives easier. Um, <laughs> we've, <laughs> we've also used RHDS for custom application stuff. So. We have uh, mail servers that do MX lookups in LDAP, and that's because the mail servers do a lot of work and LDAP just responds really quickly and it's a good purpose fit. But again, we don't wanna put that entire structure into IDM, so in all likelihood, we're going to continue to run the LDAP servers that we have now. We're just gonna uh, minimize that as much as possible. Phase four is Kerberos cutoff. That's going to be, right now we're scoping probably end of 2020. And the only reason why is, again, we don't really have a whole lot of control. We can force people inside of the IT organization to some extent to make moves, but 
outside of that, realistically, the only way we're going to get people off of the old systems is to really persuade them hardly whenever they're, um, I guess, whenever their stuff is about to time out. So if you're going to be migrating from RHEL 6 to RHEL 7, or if your application is basically going to get rewritten, or your device is going to be retired and you're going to get a new laptop, whatever it may be, whenever that brand new thing is rolled out, then it's time for you to move. And then once everybody moves, then we'll be able to cut it off. Uh, phase five is forever out, and that's gonna be us examining if OTP and bind can be more widely used. Right now in house, we have a different OTP solution that seems to work pretty well. So we're not super, I guess we're at this instance, we're not super interested in pursuing that route. And bind is also going to be interesting as well because we have some config management and we have lots of DNS servers around and um, I don't know if people will want to give up the way that they're used to managing that kind of stuff to move to IDM. I'm also, like we haven't done any benchmarking or anything either, but I'm not, I don't know. I'd assume IDM would be able to keep up with the, the demand, but we have lots of records and we get lots of requests. So um, I think IDM kind of treats its buying instance a little bit like a black box. Like I don't think they want you to go in and mess with it a whole lot and that that leaves me a little concerned versus the way that they treat RHDS, RHCS and all that is also kind of black box, but we don't really need special configs there. So I'm okay with it. Um, let's skip this slide. Last time I gave this talk, I had an hour, so I'm kind of trying to go through this pretty quick. Uh, so data synchronization was one of the problems. And so IPA officially supports IPA migrate DS. We use this for the initial data import and it's good for kind of a one and done approach. Unfortunately, um, to support these gradual migrations that I've been talking about and because we have a very complex account lifecycle management that's hooked into things like HR systems and SaaS vendors that track locations of employees and things of that nature, we have to run both systems at the same time. And that is terrible. Um, and in order to do that, we have written custom code and I would strongly suggest that you don't do this. But basically what's happening here is we have the legacy LDAP system that's still being used for some of the lifecycle management of accounts because again, that's, that's what systems we currently have tied into it. And as those things change, we have custom code that is then taking those entries out of legacy LDAP, putting them into IDM. And sometimes that's with API calls and other times that's with raw LDAP rights and all the OU structure and everything else changes. It's just not pretty. Uh, additionally, as new apps are onboarded or as new consumers are onboarded, we tell them to use IDM, but then every once in a while, somebody's using IDM, but some of their clients aren't using IDM. So then we have to do the reverse as well. Now we have to copy stuff from IDM to the old systems. It's Anyhow, if you can force a change, force the change, um, because this is not good. Um, another situation we hit is in RHDS, we were using a plugin called PAM Passthrough. And what PAM Passthrough does is it allows you to configure password lookups in different ways using PAM modules. And Traditionally, what we had done with RHDS is delegate to um, Kerberos, PAM KRB. And what that meant is your LDAP records did not have a user password attribute. And every time you would do a bind against LDAP, LDAP would then talk to Kerberos and validate the password. We did this because, sweet, now we only have to store passwords in one place, and ideally that's more secure. Um, this did not end well or did not support our migration very well to IDM because IDM supports mass setting passwords and communicating them out to users as a migration strategy. That would, there's no way we could ever do that. Um, maybe small companies that would work. They also support a web UI migration and an SSSD migration 
which both of which look for the user password and validate against it. And then if Kerberos doesn't have the password, set it. So they, they tackle it from the kind of reverse of what we had. They assume you're gonna migrate over an LDAP environment that has user password hashes and you can't migrate over the Kerberos data. So then they would set up the Kerberos data. We had the exact opposite. We can't migrate over the Kerberos data and we can't, there you go. Um, so we had to write a custom app. And the custom app uh, is using a specific account or a special account inside of IDM. And what happens is you end up on this web page and it's protected by SAML and it's SAML's tied to our legacy LDAP and Kerberos infrastructure. And once you log in, it asks you to set your IDM password. So you enter your IDM, whatever you want your IDM password to be, and it goes out via REST API and using that special account, that special service account and IDM and set your password. It also bypasses the user password reset requirement. So normally whenever you set a password in IDM, next time the person logs in, they immediately have to change it. Um, so this has worked well. And this, this is easy and simple for people to, to manage. Um, so overall, this was a win. It just took a little bit of time to figure out a workaround. Uh, so I've, I've alluded to this some. Um, one of our biggest problems is we can't lift and shift at all. So in addition to me not knowing what the guy across the hall is doing, like if he is, is he running a Raspberry Pi under his desk that he's using to you know, somehow seed production information? I don't know. Um, <coughs> We also don't have really strong I, team ties to specific DNS subdomains, which makes uh, Kerberos migration fun as well. So if you can switch everybody at the same time, that's great. If you can't switch everybody at the same time, the next best thing you can do, or the next best easiest thing you can do, is update like the KRB5 configs or top level DNS text records which is what the domain realm stuff there is. So we could say like uh, teamx.redhat.com is still pointing at the legacy redhat.com realm and teamy.redhat.com is pointing at the ipa.redhat.com realm. But the issue is, is teamx, some of them will be redhat.com, some of them will be ipa.redhat.com. And because of that, we have to end up doing all of the Kerberos information has to be fetched from DNS. And as a specific machine is migrated, we have to add a text record for that specific machine if they're staying in that same subdomain. Um, yep, so that, that's working, it's fine. And this is, this is basically the statements of what's happening here, what I just went over. We have to move one system at a time as they age out and create DNS text records that tell it what, basically that point this guy at the IPA realm instead. And we're doing that as things age out. And we're also, again, creating things, or we're making things as simple as possible so that when they do age out, people will be able to migrate to IDM and hopefully not complain a whole lot. So we're creating puppet classes, Ansible roles, RPMs, and docs for bring your own devices. We're also updating kickstarts and other automations uh, that our desktop team uses to spin up the corporate laptops. Uh, another problem is people hate change. Um, so people are used to how they're getting certs for uh, or from RHCS and people keep asking like, well, Puppet or Ansible is doing a really good job of managing SSH allow groups. Why should we switch to H back inside of IDM? And again, Puppet or Ansible is doing a good job with config management for sudoers and SE Linux. Why should we change? Um, and the last one's again a mention of basically how we're going to have to end up dirtying up the IDM schema. So people are used to querying LDAP and getting things, again, light biography or um, we have like a like a VoIP system or a video conferencing system so we'll store like their video conferencing ID and LDAP and 
things that aren't, you know, again, stock, uh, stock schema things. So to get people to change, we're developing and offering even better automation. So for the certificate stuff that they're used to, we're going ahead and creating better automation using CertMonger and other custom code that will spit out or basically take the PIM that CertMonger spits out and renews automatically and converts that into uh, PKCS12s and JKSs and uh, just really makes it nice so that software developers can just point at a specific file and just know that the cert's always going to be up to date, which is a win for them compared to, okay, well, my cert's going to expire and now I have to run an automation script to get a new cert. So that's better automation. Um, for SSH allow groups, we're doing stuff like auto member groups in HBAC. So we'll be able to set things like, okay, you are underneath this manager. And because of that, you will have access to these systems. Um, and that will just happen. And we can do auto member groups and auto member host groups. And it all just happens automatically inside of IDM whenever it does the, the refresh stuff. So again, that's in some ways better than what they're used to with uh, SSH allow groups. We're also doing trainings and demo sessions and again, pro con list type things for sudoers and SE Linux to try to get people interested in switching from config management to uh, basically moving that some of that stuff into IDM. And here, the last bullet point again is talking about us moving some of that non-standard data into IDM. There's some links there. The, my slide deck's on the, uh, the sketch site, so you guys can grab <coughs> that. But here's some, some of the things that we've done to do that. Uh, it's not quite as simple as I would like it to be or quite as simple as it was in RHDS. Uh, you have to do some stuff, and then you have to do some other stuff to get it to actually display the extended schema attributes at the API level. And I got five minutes left and ready for questions. <clears throat> yeah? Can we, uh, from a Fedora 29 system, join IBM today? Uh, the question was from a Fedora, what version? Last version. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. From a Fedora 29 version, or laptop, can you join IBM? Yes, um, I will say that with one small caveat. I know it works with Fedora 28, and I have seen a, I've gotten a ticket in my queue, and it was somebody that was trying to use Fedora 29, and I, I'm honestly not up to date on the desktop side, but I think there was um, auth configs being replaced by something. I'm sure somebody in here knows. Um, <coughs> And because of that, the IPA installer, I think, was bombing because it was expecting auth config. No, this, this whole thing. It's fixed? Everything fixed. Beautiful. How do you need to be in the meeting? Because this is all the internal stuff. It's not the internal Yes, that is true. Any other questions? Um, yeah, if you know now, would you still migrate to IDM with all the stuff you learned? Uh, yeah, the question was if I knew of all the problems that we were going to hit, would I still move to IDM? And the answer is yes. Um, long term, this is going to be a game changer for my team because it's going to be less systems to manage. And it's also the right thing for Red Hat to do. Um, we try to dog food whenever we can. So the more that we use our own products and you know, the more we discover some issues, the better off it is. Yeah? Uh, if I may ask how many, let's say, user entries you have in the uh, <laughs> database? Sure. Yeah, the, uh, the question was how many user entries do we have in the database? The yeah, uh, right now Red Hat has, last time I looked, a little over 1,200 users. Uh, yeah, yeah, sorry, 12,000. Yeah, 12,000. <laughs> Missed a zero. Um, now, to blow your mind, I think we have like 50,000 groups. So, <laughs> yeah. In addition to that question, do you also have a employees in your database? 
that? Uh, you, you also keep onboarding employees and increasing learning needs. Uh, uh, because yes. that's uh, maybe more than the problem. Yeah, the question was do we keep offboarded or terminated employees in the user base? And the answer is yes. Uh, 12,000 was the active user count. I have no idea what the inactive user count is. We moved them to, in legacy LDAP, we moved them to um, a different OU. And in IDM, we just do the inactive thing. Um, yeah. Anything else? Cool. Thanks, everybody.